Hi, this is JG. Uh, you remember uh, the guy who sounds as Mario Draghi and he is equally boring? Well, that's me. Um, in a previous video, I gave a, a very general explanation of how I've come up with a breakout system. I have tested the idea on several markets uh, and several time frames, and it looks quite good, quite solid. It makes sense to me. I'm happy to follow it uh, as I am more of a breakout trend follower uh, trader than, than a swing trader. It ticks quite a lot of boxes on my systematic approach to trading. Uh, so now I have to take some operational decisions. I have to decide where to apply the system. And uh, for a number of reasons, uh, which I have no time to go through here, uh, email if you were interested, I have decided to pick the 15 minutes time frame. Just take it as a given. Also, for a number of reasons, I have decided that due to the recent market turmoil, uh, the capital I'm using to trade this particular system does not allow me to trade equity indices or oil or other commodities. So at the moment, um, they are no part of the system. And for simplicity, I reduced the number of markets to nine, which is still quite a big number to, uh, of market to follow. Uh, they are currency pairs mo mainly, uh, Euro, US dollar, Euro, Japanese yen, GU, um, uh, GY, EA, Australian dollar, Australian dollar, US dollar, uh, Australian dollar, Canadian, uh, US dollar, Canadian dollar, and US dollar, Japanese yen. Uh, when it's allowed by volatility, which is quite erratic and could be quite wild these days still, I also use gold. It's called uh, XAO. Um, now, the more switched on viewers uh, among you uh, will have noticed that uh, there might be a bit of correlation issues here. Well done, but I will address this some other time. I have reset and readjusted the system from time to time. Uh, and uh, in particular, this time uh, I have adjusted from when I left the office for the COVID-19 uh, emergency. So the blog and everything else will start again uh, from the 30th of April. And however, I have done a much, much longer test over the years and specifically on a version basically like the one I'm going to show. Um, I have tested since March 2019. So I have made several tests of, uh, of, of this particular system. Another important warning, uh, which is too often overlooked. This way of checking performance does not calculate the trading fees, but we should take them into account, especially in systems like this that produces um, so many trades. I have calculated that on average, the incidence of fees on performance is between 28 and 32%. You heard me right. About a third of performance is eaten away by brokers. This is quite impressive. And um, th there are a few ways to slightly mitigate this, but still quite shocking. And I know many people, rightly so, will not tolerate this level of costs. I hate it too, uh, but it's part of the business. And this is another reason why, as we will see, I try to achieve a pretty high hit ratio from, from my system. Finally, I want to test if it makes any difference to apply a couple of trend filters, taking long signals only when the market is in an uptrend and short signals when uh, uh, the markets are on a downtrend. But we will see it probably later on if, if we have time. So these are the main rules. 
that we will apply and explore uh, for simplicity reasons. On the blog, I'm going to report the performance of this particular system with these particular parameters. And I'm going to report it according to these rules. So the way it should be traded according to these rules. And I repeat, according to these rules. Why do I stress this? Because it is very important to understand that this is not necessarily the way I trade it. These are not necessarily all the rules that I use. And even if they were, I'm a very lousy uh, uh, trader at executing the trades. I have said many times that my systems are not totally automated, uh, automated and uh, that I, uh, I trade them semi-automatically in a way that requires me to stay in front of monitors and actively follow the charts and the signals. This is a very, very important issue, and I think I will stress it uh, in a very boring way. Now, uh, before we're going there, uh, there are some operational decisions uh, uh, and, and the rules. There are the following. The trade management is going to be simplified, and we'll see how. Um, I'm going to use fixed stop, basically because otherwise it's too complicated to explain what I do. Um, but still, the fixed stop is based on average volatility of each single instrument. And I try to keep it as uh, standard as possible among similar instruments, uh, but each one has its own. Why is that? Well, there's no point to have a fixed stop on uh, uh, US dollar, Japanese yen, and on pound against Japanese yen. Uh, th their volatility, intraday volatility, is completely different. Uh, the concept is R. Uh, the R, as you know it these days, is the infection rate. Well, in, in my case, it's one unit of risk, however you measure it. Uh, and we will see how we measure it. So we risk one R, and the stop loss is one R. If your level of risk is 1% of your trading account, for instance, uh, your stop loss will be 1% of the trading account. Now, if the f it's fixed, uh, and it in terms of points is 25 points, your stop loss for that particular instrument is going to be 25 points. The targets, uh, well, we're going to have a first target at uh, half R, so 0.5 R, and another target at 1 R. We will see um, why uh, in a second. I also want to introduce uh, a break-even point uh, for a number of reasons I can't explain at the moment. But uh, once the market reached the half R level, and maybe we're getting half a position out, uh, we are going to put the stop at break-even. So we're not going to give back that uh, profit that we would have made up to that point. I also decided to ignore the filters that I uh, mentioned before, uh, at least for now. Uh, the entry, uh, we will see some examples in some of the other videos, but the entries are going to be on the breakout uh, and actually two or three points over the breakout signal. So two or three points above a buy breakout and two or three points below a sell breakout. Now, uh, I warned you that I'm going to be very boring about the performance uh, and the performance traps and misconceptions. Um, the performance uh, we're going to put down here uh, is not necessarily my performance. Uh, and I want to explain why this is that way. Firstly, I can't sit down from 7.30 to 4 o'clock, which is usually 1 p.m. When I, when I stop, without breaks, not even in lockdown. Uh, yes, uh, of course, one could code and automate the rules, but number one, I'm hopeless, 
at coding. I've tried with professional coders and still the results are not to, to, to my liking. But that's another long story altogether. The point is semi-automated uh, and uh, I can't follow this system uh, all these hours without breaks and without interruption. Secondly, this is not the only system I follow. Uh, I have my own trading style and it's my own trading style. Nobody else is going to have my own trading style for a billion of reasons. So I'm following two or three different systems uh, the way I can uh, and um, I might be um, focusing my attention on other systems and I simply miss signals on this particular system and I can miss signals too uh, in, in other particular systems. Thirdly, uh, well, you know, sometimes uh, I hit my daily uh, maximum risk uh, and that's this picture on the right here. Uh, I have some maximum risk. Uh, some days really, uh, and, and you know about that, uh, you sh should have been uh, much better off if you didn't get out of bed. And some other days uh, at 9.30 you're already up uh, three, four hours and you don't want to tempt your luck. The other big thing is sometimes well, number one, uh, sometimes I'm, I make mistakes. Uh, everybody makes mistakes, and, and I still do quite a lot of mistakes, make quite a lot of mistakes. Sometimes I can't be bothered uh, because something happened, um, or I may be busy with other tasks, or my family requires uh, urgent attention, especially in this lockdown period, uh, and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is why the performance of the system will never be my performance. You should take it as, a, as an imperfect benchmark to see what you may aspire to, but it is virtually impossible to achieve. And this explains how some systems with the same rules, actually any system with the same rule, rules apply to the same markets at the same time will give different results for each trader. And this is also why you should never trust any performance report that does not come out of a totally algorithmically uh, run system and is independently verified. But the most important thing, you should not take any performance result at face value. And in particular, I'm referring to those billions of people out there promising the sky in a couple of weeks uh, buy my system, and buy my uh, signals, and in 15 days you're going to buy 150 Ferraris and, and that sort of stuff. We all know um, uh, these stories. They are selling dreams. You want to buy dream, dreams, uh, and you find out that uh, the only way to have that sort of money is to sell system to gullible people. Trading is hard. It's a slow career. And it's, as we always say, very, very boring. Still, we need to uh, start from somewhere. And um, this is the most objective way to proceed, I believe. Um, some more information on how I test it. Uh, this is not my trading journal, by no means, actually. This is an extra. Uh, but I just decided to, to show you here because it's an extract uh, where I measure how many times a trade has been a loss, which is represented by a negative 1R, uh, how many times it had reached half R, or 50% of the initial risk. Um, yes, I know that many of you will be horrified by this, but bear with me. And how many times it has reached 1R, or 100% of the initial risk. So you risk 1 to get 1. Uh, so you'll see on this blog three sets of performance. Uh, what happens if I take all position off at half R? 
which is the um, uh, gray uh, line here. What happens if I take all position out of 1R, uh, which is the blue line here? And what happens if I take half position out of half R and half position out of 1R, uh, which is the orange uh, line here? With, with, with these parameters, this system has a high number of traits, and it's basically a scalping system. And a scalping system is not everyone's cup of tea, uh, and I agree with you, uh, and this is not the only system I trade. But anyway, uh, anyway, nobody is forced to keep watching this, so if you don't like it, don't watch this blog and don't watch these videos. Uh, this is a weekly performance, and, and my idea is to put out there uh, on the website the weekly performance. And again, this is a totally hypothetical performance for all the reasons that I explained above. So this is the first uh, week. I think it goes from uh, uh, the 30th of... Uh, March to the 4th of April um, and what is interesting to see here is um, that risking one to get half so 0 0.5 to one risk reward uh, reward risk is an approach that gives marginally better results how comes well it's a hit ratio how many times I am successful on my trade so I might wish to go for a 3 to 1 reward risk, uh, like the canonical kind of uh, um, approach. But if the probability with this system of hitting the 3 to 1 uh, target is 10%, I will lose money. If my hit ratio on a 0 0.5 to 1 uh, approach is, say, 70-75%, adding a break-even rule uh, for good me measure, I'm making much more money. But don't trust me. Uh, do your own calculation. Uh, anyway, uh, going back to performance, uh, this means that if you risk, say, half cent of your capital on every trade, you would have made 5.25%, 6.5%, and 6% respectively in a week. Too good to be true? Well, definitely it is. Um, first of all, you would have had 96 trades, 97 trades. Depending on how much you spend per trade, you should have had a, a pretty big broker's bill. And as we said before, this system is very expensive because it trades quite frequently. By my calculation, you should cut off about 30%. Well, some smart people out there will say, oh yeah, this is FX, right? So I don't pay fees. Wrong. Uh, you do not go through, if, if you don't go through an ECN, uh, no time to explain what an ECN is, Google it, uh, and, and, and pay fees, your counterparty is the broker, the broker itself. And he is applying a usually much bigger uh, hybrid um, uh, bid offer spread. So your fee might be zero, but they're never zero. Your performance uh, is affected by a much bigger bid offer spread. And what I found out that the bid, bid offer spread is reduced quite dramatically uh, on on um, an ECN uh, platform. And so it's worthwhile to pay the fees uh, to uh, have a much better uh, bid offer spread. Um, the other thing I would assume is that on average I should be able to take perhaps half the trades for the reason that I explained before. So even with all these calculation and, 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 and caveats, the performance still looks, looks pretty good. Um, now, there are a number of other things we can uh, uh, measure uh, of, of, from our journal, from our extract of the journal. But actually, I, I prefer to stop here. And in the future, I will also show some practical examples of um, uh, how we go about trading this system. Um,
sorry, I know this is very boring, but uh, you asked for it. Uh, have a great day. Thank you.